God said to Moses, I am. That I am. I am is my name. Yahweh is my name. Jehovah is my name. Now all those title names tells us what God is capable of doing. Your system of sicknesses, hereditary sicknesses, can be purged if you can have this mind right to accept the word of God. The reason why people find it difficult to know the truth is because the devil is also a master of deceiving people. And the devil blinds people from knowing the truth. Because the Bible says that the devil knows that it is only the truth that shall make a man indeed free. I wish I was talking to seven people in the house. Ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. It's good to know the truth. It's good to have the breastplate of righteousness. It's good to share the gospel of peace, having your shield. Your feet show with the preparation of the gospel of peace. But above all these things, your shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench, put off, destroy, kill the fire of every wicked that enemy sense against you. In other words, what should I say? Your faith is what can destroy, prevent, stop any workings of the enemy that is steered or fixed or directed towards you. We are dealing with prayer, but I'm taking my time to lay a very good foundation which will help all of us. Above all, taking the shield of faith, where will you shall be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked. And I like that word. You shall be able to quench, not some. And the Bible says that praying always with all prayers praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit hallelujah praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit ladies and gentlemen when we talk about prayer like Bible declares praying always with all prayer we have different types of prayer we have different types of prayer that we pray as Christians. Ah, yeah, but say Christopher. We have a type of prayer like deliverance prayer. We have prayer of intercession or intercessory prayer. We have prayer of um Supplication. Thanksgiving prayer. And we have warfare prayer. Somebody say warfare prayer. We have different kinds of prayer. Not every kind of prayer has its place in the word of God and has its place in our lives. As part of the different types of prayers we're going to be looking at, we will also touch on some hindrances to prayer. Certain things that you do that will hinder your prayers. But 
But today, let me lay this good foundation that will help us spring on into all these type of prayers that we'll be dealing with. Are you ready with me? So what's What is prayer? Prayer simply means a communication between humanity and deity. Prayer simply means that a child of God or a child talking to his father. So in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, when the disciples met with Jesus and Jesus taught them how to pray, Jesus said, after this manner pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, in other words, Jesus was telling them that when you pray, your prayer must be directed towards somebody. But as a child of God, when you pray, your prayer must be directed to your father. And not your earthly father, but your father which is in heaven. In fact, that passage of scripture is not just a prayer for us to be reciting. Now we come every day, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. It is good. I'm not saying that you can't pray that, but Jesus taught us principles of prayer in that particular passage. So prayer is communicating with your father. It's talking to your creator. And therefore prayer also is acknowledging the supremacy of God. Acknowledging the supremacy of your father. You see, you declare in prayer that God is bigger than you. Number two, when you pray to our Father which is in heaven, you declare that he is bigger than anything in this world. You acknowledge that he is the champion supremo. He is the biggest of all God, the mightiest. You acknowledge that he is the only one who can deal with your problem? So when you come before God in prayer, you are communicating with your father. You talk to your father. Regarding your needs. Regarding your challenges. Regarding somebody or an issue. Or concerning his kingdom. You direct it to our Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. I know some of the challenges we face in our prayer, prayer lives. So many people wish that they know posture by which God can quickly answer your prayer. If we can only know that if I kneel on one knee and pray is the fastest way of God answering my prayer, then everybody will be doing that. If I stand with my hands lifted up, if that is the sure way of God answering your prayer, then everybody will be doing that. And so many of us have funny understanding of prayer. Of what prayer is. Can I talk to somebody here? In fact, some Christians even get intimidated. By the prayers of other Christians. I will explain. Sometimes when you see another Christian pray in church. And you look at his mannerism in prayer. Sometimes you find, you ask yourself, do I even know how to pray? So That also happened 
to the Pharisees, I mean the disciples of Jesus. The disciples of Jesus observed the Pharisees and the Sadducees pray in public and they saw how long their prayers were and they saw their mannerism their piety in prayer and the disciples got intimidated so they wanted Jesus to teach them how to pray Sometimes you see, when you see another Christian pray in church, in prayer meeting, and you are praying and you see another Christian pray, you look at that person and you wonder if me too, if me too, I am praying. So, maybe now when Christ on be a bonfire, now we say, ah, so me some pain, I'm able to. So, we are confused which type or which kind of prayer does God listen or God hears? Does God answer? Long prayers or short prayers? So, nyami, obon pai, tenting and dan pai, tia, en oma humo ae. Does God answer quiet prayers? So, obon pai, koma, nyami, o Or God answer loud prayers? Ana, u tie tie mwa, en o tie wana. We get confused. Ya, na ya ye basa. Sometimes we do not understand and we do not know. So, maybe I entia si ye nim. Whether if you... Keep repeating your prayers. That is what catches the attention of God. It is not about how long you pray. I believe in praying for long. I believe in praying short prayers. Long prayers is not an enemy, an enmity to God, or God has not heard you praying long. Neither does He hear short prayers. God does not hear quiet prayers. And God does not hear loud prayers. So if you are quiet in your prayers, don't condemn the loud prayer. And if you're loud in your prayers, don't tell the quiet prayer, prayerful person, he is not spiritual. Am I talking to somebody here? Because the Bible says that his ears are not blocked. If he say, oh, so soon see we. that he cannot hear your prayers. God listens to the loud prayers. He also listens to the quiet prayers. In fact, the Bible says, even before you pray, he knows it. Even before you pray, he knows it. So, whichever way you pray, as long as you are in the borders of the word of God and the principles of prayer, let not the one condemn the other. I wish I heard an amen in this house. Because what we fail to understand is that in our work with God, our temperament even affect the, the way we listen to a research I did. This was written by a man called Pablo Martinez. He says our personality type will, will be reflected in how we pray. Our personality type will reflect in how we pray. An introvert, somebody who is introvert, quiet within. An introvert will be comfortable with silence and meditation. And 
an extrovert. An extrovert's prayer will be short and action oriented. The big challenge in Christian discipleship is, is being willing to welcome people whom God has made very different from ourselves. Being aware of our personality preferences will help us find modes of prayer that works for us. This is another research by C.G. Jung. It was popularized by Mayor's Briggs. Here, I will just give you one example. The prayer life of extroverts, their natural tendencies is towards action rather than meditation. You see, this is another scholar saying this. Their prayer is towards action rather than meditation. They will be ones, sorry, they will be the ones doing things in the church because they like to be active all the time. They like to be active. All the time. Consequently, they find it difficult to maintain a regular prayer life. The more extrovert a person is, the more difficult they find it to pray and to concentrate while praying. Too much to do. That is extrovert. Introverts, on the other hand, are much more methodical and will set time apart. Extrovert finds difficult to cultivating difficult in cultivating their inner life. Their thoughts and feeling flow spontaneously outwards. So beginning to pray is rather like having to make an enormous leap. They will usually choose praying with others rather than privately. Prayer meetings give them the opportunity to relate with others, which is precisely the source of energy they need to start praying. Once they are in the atmosphere of a group, they enjoy participation. This community flavor is just the kind of stimulus they need to warm them up spiritually. For them, prayer is linked with service and action. The focus, the focus of their request is the need of the world rather than the inner world, unlike the introvert said by C.G. Young. Now you can interpret. Your kind in Atia, and he said, O be a oye she oye gidigidino, a baby an empire bono, or ye be actions woman. Na ni our own pen and was a media debiano, or Jinny or Jinny empire bono, I won't eat. You see, that is done. That is another misconception we've had by the translation she gave. Obia Oyade Oyashi. And we translate that to be spiritual. But being active and being, being extrovert does not necessarily make you a spiritual person. Oh, I wish I was talking to some people in this house. I've established the fact that both introvert and extrovert are necessary, and one cannot condemn the other. But I'm trying to demolish the misconception. That when somebody is loud, when somebody is full of action, it means that I are she or your spiritual. Yeah, I maybe it's my physical and spiritual. That does not necessarily mean spirituality. 
And no end, I say, or you who when you buy. Am I talking to somebody here? So, am I talking to somebody here? So, if somebody is loud, allow the person. So, obi a share, Jano. That is the person's nature, temperament. Now, bossuning. My responsibility as your pastor is always teach the truth. Masudi said, or chef only said, make can no quarry no debia. And I have vowed in my spirit. And I vow that in this kingdom and in this work, now, I would teach the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Most of us pastors do long prayers just to encourage you to pray. Number two, we do long prayers because when we come together as a group, we have no matter of topics we have to deal with. We have to deal with this one, we have to deal with that one, we have to deal with that one, we have to deal with that one. Have to deal with this one. But when you are given a microphone, you have the opportunity to pray. And the whole church is waiting on you to respond, Amen. That is not the time to pray your 45 minutes prayer. A man or woman that spends a longer time in the presence of God privately does short prayers. Mark chapter 1 verse 35. Mark was sympathy back when she was talking about Jesus. Jesus. A long while before day. Yes, we try to answer now. A long while. Answer now. I did a betsy Quran. Answer now. I did a betsy Quran. Long while before day. Jesus will get up and go out into a lonely place. Private place. To pray. Yes, we call. Go into a bomb. So about. 2 a.m., 3 a.m., or 4 a.m., Jesus will get out of his bed while the disciples are sleeping. And he will go to a place and he will spend longer hours in prayer. And the Bible continues from Mark chapter 1, verse 35. That, and when in the morning, when the disciples woke up, the people have gathered to hear him and they did not know where Jesus was. So they went out finding where he was and they told him, Master, the people are there waiting for you. But look at Jesus. He said, I have a cemetery. Before Lazarus' tomb. No one our prayer. Father, I know you hear at me all the time. But for the sake of these people standing here, I had to pray this. Lazarus, come forth! Lazarus, And the miracle just happened. It was a short prayer publicly. Am I talking to somebody here? It was a short prayer! But in the private, he spent longer time before God. The year has almost come to an end, two months away, and before we enter the coming year, we take control of the gates. Of the coming year. The International Palace Church presents Taking Control of the Gates 2017. Join us as we take control of the gates of 2018, confront strongholds, and take possession of all the good things the Lord has put in store for us. There's a reason why we are coming together right here in the palace of the International Palace Church to seek the face of God through prayer and fasting to take control of the gates. And this year, the thing for the program is confronting strongholds. Ministering her, Bishop James Sa. When Jesus was in the storm, he did not call medical services. He suspended the storm. Bishop Owusu Ansa. Anything that you do, make sure that he has endorsed it 
and he has agreed and he has asked you to do that and then you do that for his glory and our very own host reverend dr bernard mensa adams join us they will lead us in serious time and moment of prayer to take control of the gate it is your moment to take charge date 12th november 2017 to 26th november 2017 time 6:30 p.m each night venue the palace of the international palace church located on the ecowash road off reach junction at Gogba road madina come join us as we sow seeds of greatness into the year 2018 come and be blessed meet us at the palace of the international palace church see you there